focus on one of the leading causes of cancer-related deaths, brain tumors. There are more than 600 people in the U.S. today with a brain tumor diagnosis and another 66,000 new diagnoses are expected this year, folks. The average life expectancy for a patient diagnosed with brain cancer is only 12 to 15 months. Join us now is someone who not only helps fight against cancer every day, but he's taking a huge leap to raise money for brain cancer research. Let's welcome Dr. Bob Carter, the Chief of Neurosurgery at UCSD. Thank you for coming by the show. What an honor. Taylor, thank, thank you, you so much. Glad to be here. Okay, so every day you're seeing patients diagnosed with brain cancer. That's right. Well, my, my practice is neurosurgery of the brain in terms of patients with brain tumors. So those are the kind of patients that come in and these are folks that have a battle ahead of them and we're trying to support them and get them through it. Now of all these patients that you see, what percentage of those patients you know are not going to make it? So they're of the 66,000 yeah. new diagnoses you mentioned each year, uh, about half of those are really malignant cancers. Mm -hmm. And those are the folks that struggle the most and the life expectancy is only a couple of years. Uh, the other half we can do a lot for in terms of really curing them and getting them past the, the more benign diagnoses. But we're focused on these most malignant cancers because those are the ones that really affect us, affect personality, the ability to move, who we are. Mm -hmm. And we want to try to give those folks a, a longer chance uh, of surviving. Are we there? I know we need, you know, research. It takes so much money to find cures and medicines that help prolong life, right? I mean, how close are we to actually finding a cure for brain cancer? You know, in the 70s, we talked about the war on cancer, and it's been so many years. My feeling is we're going to make progress in an evolutionary manner. Probably not one revolution that's just going to one day cure cancer. It's going to be incremental steps here and there, and we are making those steps. So we have prolonged survival, mm -hmm. and we have more patients that are getting out two years and five years, and some even 10 years, but we want to increase that percentage. Uh, how long will it take? I think it'll be at least another 20 to 30 years before we're really seeing long, long survival. Yeah, far away. Yeah. Well, I have a personal story uh, with brain cancer. I had a wonderful uncle I was very close to, lived with him at some point in my life, and he was only like 50 years old, 51 years old, blew his nose, was living the dream, by the way, had worked hard his whole life, him and his wife, bought a ranch in Colorado, having horses, doing, living the dream. One day he blows his nose and a tumor dislodged in his nasal cavity. Go to the doctor and it yeah. spread through his brain and nothing they could do about it. You know, that's the thing about brain tumors. It's yeah. so sudden in the diagnosis for so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had patients that were working on their job, fully vigorous, and then one day something new happens, a headache or a little bit of weakness in the hand or some slurred speech, and their life has changed at that point. So for these individuals, th those are the ones we're fighting for. For your uncle, I'm sure that had a lot of effects on him and his family. It, it absolutely did. Um, it, you know, it bankrupt a family, number one. Number two, I, he wasn't even the same guy towards the end. I know that the tumor is pr uh, putting pressure, I guess, on different parts of the brain yeah. that changes behavior. So, you know, you'd see parts of him there, and then, you know, other times you wouldn't. And I think it was very hard on his loved ones. And I, think that's, I think that's the hardest thing. And when I see families, because the patient doesn't come alone. They mm -hmm. come with their family. Their families are supporting them and they're the ones that are living through that process. It's a challenge, uh, those, those early years after that diagnosis. The radiation treatment, the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. the surgery, it all takes a toll. But one thing that's really impressed me is the courage of the patients. Uh, the patients, they fight through. They're looking for every avenue for new treatments, mm -hmm. new cures. They're willing to take the hard steps to be involved in clinical trials. So that's inspiring to me. Um, actually, I've, I've told my wife many times, I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to work with people who are striving and trying to make life better for themselves and their families. It must be hard on you. You get to save a lot of lives, but there's some you can't save. And you, you grow bonds with these patients, right? And that's then right. And you have to say goodbye, and you see how torn up their family is. That's got to take a toll. I mean, that's got to be wearing. It does take a toll, but, um, you know, I, I feel like we have, we're building that, that endurance that we need to, mm -hmm. as a as a community. You know, in San Diego, I don't know if you know this, we have one of the, really the leading 
groups, both research-wise and clinical treatment of, of brain tumors. Um, we have a cancer center, the Morse Cancer Center at UC San Diego. And then we have two basic science cancer centers at the Salk Institute and the Sanford Burnham Institute. And all of those institutes are coming together to fight this disease. So yeah, it does take a toll, it adds up, but a lot of people are dedicating their lives to, to finding a cure. That's awesome. What did you bring here? You brought so a prop. This is a model. That looks like me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> this is a model of the, of the brain itself. Mm -hmm. And when we do surgery, what we're trying to do is actually, as you, as you mentioned, take pressure off the brain. Mm -hmm. So different parts of the brain will control different functions. Back here we'll have the vision area, the occipital lobe. Here we'll have the motor area, the frontal lobe. And then a lot of personality is up here in the front. Yeah, that's also in the frontal lobe. Each of these areas has different implications. One of the things we're doing with our surgery is we're trying to actually make it more accurate. Um, things like intraoperative MRI, where we do an MRI scan during the surgery. That's coming to San Diego. We'll be here in about two years. We're really, really excited about that. Um, new ways to uh, do uh, monitoring during the surgery. So you may have heard of awake surgery where we perform the surgery yeah. with the patient awake. Well, you see it on TV, right? Yeah. It's yeah. so much that entertainment, you know, imitates real life. So they're getting their ideas from somewhere. Yeah. But that's pretty crazy. Yeah, the awake surgery, I think, has been really beneficial in terms of monitoring the surgery and making it safer. So we can work very close to a delicate yeah. area remove the tumor, and then have that patient maintain that function, which is really important. Incredible. It's a miracle. But we need more money. We need more money. We need that's more right. money, and that's going to bring us to our next subject, which is you. You are so passionate about what you do. You have dedicated your life to finding a cure, to helping people, to fighting cancer every day, that you're even going to leap off how many stories? One of the tallest buildings in San yeah. Diego. Talk about that. So. Uh, this came about about a year ago. Uh, we have a really great organization that's supporting brain cancer research here in San Diego, Accelerate Brain Cancer Cure. And they have arranged this event where we're gonna go off the Manchester Hyatt downtown, 40 stories, rappelling off the side. I'm not a big <laughs> rappelling person, yeah. but uh, when I heard about this event and I said, you know, that's a small challenge for one day compared to what my patients face, I can do that. And so uh, we're gonna, come off, uh, we've raised over $100,000 so far, and um, each of us who are going over the edge, or about 50 of us, have committed to raising $1,500 each, so. It's <laughs> amazing. Good. What day is this? This is this coming Saturday and Sunday, and uh, there's an You're opportunity. You're gonna do it two days? I'm gonna do it on just one of the days, but um, there's an opportunity for even those who are not doing it to come in on Sunday and watch the event. Uh, there'll be music and, and other things down on the fourth floor uh, pool area of the Manchester yeah. Hyatt. That's cool. So. How much does it cost to repel off the building? To repel off the building, each, each edger, that's what they're called, has yeah. committed to raise $1,500. And um, we still have a couple of slots left if there's somebody that wants to get in. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, talk about your head, protecting your head. Yeah. Jeez Louise, you're pretty daring. We're going to wear helmets. It'll be, yeah, you know, all the... Yeah, helmets not going to protect your head if you fall from that building. I no know, way. I but, know. But what a fun event. And it's a fun event, and to, to be honest, the purpose is really to rally our community yeah. here. Like you, I didn't know that you had a family member that affected was affected by a brain tumor. Yeah. You know, people like you that have been touched in some way, either closely or, or somewhat distantly, who will come together and just say, we've got to do better with this disease. That's, that's why we're doing it. Well, you know, we don't talk about it enough. That's right. We, we just don't talk about it enough. We, we talk about breast cancer, we talk about other cancers, but we don't talk about brain cancer enough. And we have to find a cure. I agree. And I thank you for thank all you. your efforts and, and really being committed. Glad to be thank here. Thank you.